So people think that alien abductions are real. How stupid do you think I am? What's up ladies and gentlemen, I'm Ines Alea and welcome to the CraterGalaxy.com space station. Here in space we are experimenting with intergalactic filmmaking skills and visual effects. If you are interested in our upcoming videos, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to stay notified when I upload new videos. Is it obvious yet that I'm really into space type stuff? I mean. I gotta chill a little bit after this video, everything is almost space related. Anyway, in today's video we've got something pretty exciting, if I may say so myself. But before we start with this video, I have a really, really nice deal for you. And wait, it's free. I just got in touch with a new audio platform called Licked, but Licked is not just an ordinary audio platform, they offer commercialized music that now you can license for YouTube. That was just not possible before, so how awesome is that? And if you sign up now with the link in the description below, you can download your first song for free instead of paying a licensing fee. So if I were you, I wouldn't wait too long, pause this video and go get your track for the next video. I'll wait. So, you did that? So we're going to see how to fake an alien beam up effect in Adobe After Effects. So I had to wait until it's night time and I needed a light strong enough to act like a beam from a UFO on myself and that would best work with some kind of spotlight. Luckily Kane TV sent me some amazing lights the other day and I must say I'm super super amazed with them. I used this Kane TV Fresnel focusable LED light which is just super dope. You can shift this over, make your spot bigger or smaller so I used this light for my shot and I also put it onto a table to get it even higher and I had Joachim a good friend of mine turning on the light when the camera was rolling so you can get this kind of effect of course I kept my shot rolling and removed the light from the scene so I could remove the lights from being visible in my shot afterwards so it's already looking pretty cool with this light but now the fun stuff is coming I'll put a link in the description below so you can follow along with this tutorial using the exact same footage as me. So I import my footage and drag my clip into a new composition. Let's find a good timing where I lift my feet from the ground and split this layer. From here we will start floating up, so right click on this layer and freeze this frame. Next drag in your clean plate clip, we will need this later so disable it for now. Now select your frozen clip layer and zoom in so you can see enough detail. Then mask yourself out with just a simple mask tool as good as possible. And as this is a frozen layer, we shouldn't worry too much about rotoscoping. We will use some other techniques to fake in some animations ourselves later on in this video. So once you mask yourself out, duplicate this layer and delete the mask. So on this layer we will mask out the shadows instead of the character and then once you are done play a little bit with the feathering of each mask. I would advise not to go too high, for example I ended up using 3 pixels of feathering. Set the blending mode of your shadow layer to a darken so we only see the dark parts on our footage. Now drag your clean plate layer below these two layers and enable it again. It will look like we have our original shot back but with everything separate so we can start animating. Click on the layer with your character masked out and press the P on your keyboard to bring up the position attributes. Then we can click on the stopwatch at the beginning of the layer and at the end of the layer move your character up a little bit. Make sure you're not going to animate too fast, it should go smooth and slowly to really sell the effect. So don't go overboard with these type of things. Next animate your shadow as well, try to keep it in the same consistency as you're moving up. But instead of moving it up we're going to of course move it backwards so it looks like the shadow is correctly reacting to the light. Next select both of the starting keyframes from your shadow and your character, then right click and go to keyframe assistance and use the easy ease. You can also jump into the graph editor to make this graph a little bit smoother. This will allow us to start off slowly and speed up over time. So it looks like I'm smoothly being lifted up from the floor. 
Next we will use the puppet tool, an amazing tool to animate easily. Click on the puppet tool and then next click on the few joints of your character. Make sure you're at the beginning of your layer and then once you have all your points go to the end of your layer. No need to create keyframes, this is done all automatically and then move a few points around to make a smooth animation, some variations so it looks like we have a little bit more life in our shot. After this we will create a new solid layer, you can make it white and mask out a beam, feather it a little bit so it looks something like this. I'm also going to create another new mask at the bottom and feather this quite a lot more so it looks like the beam is less intense over time so it's kind of fading out which is what a normal light would do if you have this kind of atmosphere effect. Duplicate this layer and increase the feather each time to make a smooth fall off of your light and then next play with the opacity so we really want to keep it subtle, it's way too much right now but you can always jump into the layer settings and also change the color from white to a blue color for example, that's completely up to you, I just wanted to show you what you can experiment with. So now we can also duplicate your main spotlight solid which for me is now blue and I'm going to duplicate the first mask and set the duplicated mask to subtract, then feather it a bit and play with the expansion move it in a little bit and this will allow us to get that nice Fresnel look at the edge of the light which is just looking a little bit more uh, realistic and also adds a little bit depth uh, to the light so that's also something that I like to do and I will also set all the layers to a blending mode add so we have a little bit more glow to that next I'm going to duplicate one of these layers once more and add an effect called fractal, fractal noise for those that watch my tutorials tons of times they know we use that a ton of times and increase the scale a little bit, use the offset turbulence here to move up the animation. And we are also going to use a simple time times 100 expression for the evolution which we also always do when we are using fractal noise. So I'm not going to dive in too much into detail for the fractal noise. If you don't know that, just go check out my other tutorials, I have a ton of other ones that are super awesome to learn fractal noise. So you can invert this effect and then add a tint effect and add some color to that. Now we play with the opacity until we have something looking like this. Again, a little bit subtle, but that looks really awesome. All right, so we are almost done. I just like to add a few more things to add more detail. I'm also going to duplicate this fractal noise layer once more and make it more intense. And this time I will trim it to the time where I start floating up. This is going to look like there is an additional force being sent out from the UFO to beam me up. So we can also add some optical flares. I know this is a third party plugin, but it just looks so much better that I couldn't do it without it. Well, I could, but it would have required a lot more work. So yeah, I'm sorry. I took a flare and put it in the corner, gave it a blue color, and then next I animated the flicker effect to give it some life. I'm also going to animate this flare right before the intense beam up so I'm going to set a keyframe right before and then move one forward and increase the intensity of the flare quite a bit. Then at the end of the clip I'm going to reset the flare to its original value. Now it looks like we have a forceful flashlight. Next I want to add an adjustment layer and I'm going to add a screen shake effect at the exact same moment. Again we basically do this in every video so I'm not going to dive into much detail. I'm going to be using the TC shake effect from our Epix transition pack which you can get on our website. I will also put a link in the description below if you're interested in that. And I will move the keyframes around a little bit and increase the intensity but yeah here we go. We can also add a new solid layer and use some particles with the CC particle world effect which comes in after effects. So finally something without an external plugin. But I'm going to set my producer a little bit wider and cover up the entire screen both for X, Y and Z. Then I'm going to jump into the physics and set it to vortex. Next in the particles tab change it to a faded sphere and we're going to make the particles a lot smaller, set the color to a blue tinted color and now we would have something like this. We have awesome particles floating around in our scene and we want them to be kind of subtle so that's what I like. So now one more thing that I like to do and this is both to give the impression of a magical force power but also to cover up some imperfections we might have because we didn't really have a big green screen where I'm actually being pulled up, we had to do it manually. We are going to use our fractal noise beam effect and set it to black and white. Next I'm going to add a solid composite effect and set this color to a perfect 50% gray. That's where the displacement isn't going to take any effect. Now pre-compose this layer, we will use this layer as a displacement map, so create a new adjustment layer and add the displacement map effect to that layer. 
Here, choose the displacement map that we just created and just pre-compose and then set the values to around 25 and also check wrap pixels around. And voila, we have some displacement going on to make it look even more realistic and also covering up some of the imperfections. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Don't forget to check out Lick for a free music track with the link in the description below. And also, if you enjoyed watching this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell to stay notified when I upload new videos. And also check out our website. We have a bunch of awesome stuff to offer for any kind of digital creative and if you buy something from our website it helps to support this channel so i hope to see you in the next one take care and goodbye